Peru. It's one of the most diverse mineral localities in all the world. And while pyrite is still king, I'm here to find the often overlooked specimens from Peruvian fluorite and crystallized tungsten to the legendary rhodochrosite. With a red so vibrant, the Incans thought it the blood of their royalty turned to stone. I'm Thomas Nagin, and I'm a mineral explorer. I'm the guy that supplies museums, galleries, and private collectors with world-class pieces of nature's art. Come along with us as we travel the globe in search of rare gems, crystals, and other fine minerals. It's not always easy, but it's always an adventure. Most of the best specimens make their way down from the high altitude mines to the mineral markets of Lima. Umberto, a Lima native, has been a friend for almost 40 years and is not only an avid rock hound, but also a student of local history. The Incan Empire was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America, stretching nearly 2,500 miles. In 1532, the brothers Huascar and Atahualpa were heirs to the Incan throne, but their battle for power sparked a civil war. Atahualpa deposed Huascar and was reuniting the kingdom when the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro arrived in search of the legendary Incan riches. Pizarro captured Atahualpa by recruiting those soldiers loyal to Huascar. Atahualpa offered Pizarro a room full of gold and jewels in return for his freedom. But Pizarro took the riches and executed Atahualpa anyway, claiming the Incan Empire for Spain. Shortly after, he established the city of Lima, creating the Viceroyalty of Peru, one of the two colonial governments which controlled all of Spanish South America. Soon, silver mining became the central industry for the Spanish, funding their continued expansion. Algunos también lo llevan para los partes de matrimonio en la tarjeta. Oh, y ahí lo abre y se sustenta. In the early 80s, when I was here in Lima, a local miner showed Umberto and I a batch of rare minerals, which led us to the Pasta Bueno mine and helped make Peruvian rhodochrosites famous. But today, Umberto has a lead on a large lot of my favorite mineral. We're at uh, Umberto's house here in uh, Lima, Peru. We're gonna weigh the quartz that they brought us so we can see how much they weigh because they sell them by weight. And then they're gonna unpack them so we can have a good look at what they've brought. The Molina family lives in Pampas, which is right near Pasta Bueno. They go and they get their minerals, whether they mine them themselves or they buy them from the miners at the mine, and they bring them here to Lima. Lima is the place where all the big business is done. Peruvian quartz often varies dramatically in composition and structure and can be much more affordable than the bigger, clearer quartz from Arkansas or Brazil. If you know what you're looking for, Peruvian quartz can be a smart buy for the right collector. This is a pretty nice piece here. This will clean up really nice. It looks really dirty to most people because it's got the iron stain on the outside, but it'll clean up really good. This piece here is fairly clean. It's doubly terminated. It's got terminations on both ends of the crystal. It's really shiny, too. This will be a nice cluster for somebody's collection also, once it's cleaned especially. Gracias. No. <laughs> Buying directly from the source ensures that the most profit goes to the miner. It also allows us to hear the stories of how those pieces were found. Yo me llamo Aníbal Molina Ceballos. Mi profesión es sacar las, las piedras, yo soy laquero. Estamos trabajando en el cerro de, llamado Quesga. Para ir al cerro a sacar la piedra, todo caminamos. Más o menos aproximadamente dos horas se sube al cerro. 
todos los días. De ahí trabajamos todos encomendadamente con los compañeros en el cerro. Nos ayudamos uno al otro. Y es muy bonito. Crystals are often byproducts of industrial mining, and Victor Montalva is trying to minimize the environmental impact through recycling. You know those cell phones, computers, and televisions we all love? They're all made out of minerals. Lots and lots of minerals. The main reason we recycle is so the heavy metal don't leach to the water channels right. or into the air and pollute the environment. In one year, they recycle and responsibly dispose of over 26,000 kilos of computers, 3,500 kilos of cell phones, and 58,000 kilos of televisions. Silver, copper, and gold have the highest electrical conductivity rate, with pure silver being the most conductive. Therefore, these processed minerals are still in high demand. So the cards are the money makers, and in this station, you will get the last parts of like the processors, the aluminum, and also some batteries that will be in the car. Then these cars will actually get crushed, and they will be ready for export. Well, that's a lot of work to separate all this stuff. But it's worth it, It's right? worth it, yes. <laughs> and uh, this has about 100, 150 grams of gold per ton, and, and a lot of copper, too. Well, how many, how many tons do you get out of, uh, uh, say, every year? So uh, we export two containers, so it's about 40, 40 tons of, of cards. That's a lot of cards. Yes, that is yeah, a lot of cards. These things don't weigh that much. Yes. <laughs> Let's do the math. 40 tons of cards times 150 grams of gold per ton equals six kilos of pure gold. The more minerals we can salvage, the less effect we have on our environment. Victor is part owner of Pasta Bueno, a working tungsten mine, and he invited Umberto and I back to the place we visited almost 40 years ago. A lovely drive. En route to Pasta Bueno, we travel on the historic Pan American Highway, with history not only outside our window, but under our tires. Pan American Highway runs over 19,000 miles, connecting North and South America, and is said to be the world's longest drivable road. For me, being a mineral dealer is more than just finding the best specimens. It's also about the cultures and stories intertwined with the land and water from which the rock was formed. Huanchaco Beach in Trujillo is home to the often photographed reed boats, or barcos de totora, dating back well before the Incan Empire. In our culture, this has been used for a long, long time, that are dating back 500 BC. So nowadays, our local fishermen are still using, but unfortunately, it's going less and less. Well, let's go see if we can take one of these boats out. Yeah, we have Felix, our friend. He Felix is going to give us a hand. OK, <laughs> great, thanks. These ancient reeds grow just down the beach in what is now a protected area. Surfing has become the popular sport of choice, though the craft of making these boats is still being passed down from generation to generation. Yeah, it is very common. This tradition survived because parents are teaching their children and children continue generation after that generation. De la cual yo también tengo mis hijos y también le enseño lo que es la tradición guanchaco, el caballito totora. Ah, okay. Ahí está en un tamaño de 40 centímetros, un souvenir como para que lo puedan llevar a cualquier lugar. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. While I'm afraid of heights, 
I love the ocean. And now it was time to take history for a ride. Refreshed and at peace, it was time to start on a journey that is exactly the opposite of those emotions. We're headed to the mine of Pasta Bueno, and it's at an altitude of almost 15,000 feet. The drive requires transversing narrow, dangerous, twisting roads with steep drop-offs. Roads, some say, rival the most dangerous in the world. So many turns. Each turn just inches from a fatal mistake. The slip of a wheel, a worn out brake, or the skid of a tire, and the only rocks we'll be needing are headstones. <laughs> Though the trip on land was not as tranquil as our trip by the sea, the reward of calming vistas and stunning scenery inspires us to continue the climb up. Pasta Bueno. Today, the old mining quarters are mostly abandoned. There are still a few families around, but the work has moved to the other side of the mountain. This area has accounted for over 6 million tons of ore, famous for its high-grade tungsten. So this is the old processing plant. This is where the mineral used to get crushed, used to get separated, and used to get refined with magnets. So the main reason the plant was moved to the new section was because, as you can see, this leads to a river and is not environmentally friendly. Yo, mi nombre es uh, Arenas Oliverio Valerio Rosales. El metal prestigioso que debemos uh, rescatar y debe ser pampa reconocido y el Perú, producto bandera, es el Wolfram, que es el tuxteno. Que eso es un aporte fundamental que aportó en esos años para la construcción de la nave espacial que llegó el Apolo 11 a la Luna. We just came up the incredibly steep road from the old mine to the top of the mountain. On this side over here is the new mine, and down here is the plant that's functioning now. We're at incredibly close to 15,000 feet, and you're gasping for air up here. Uh, they say the coca leaves helps a lot, so I'm gonna put a chew in, and maybe that'll, uh, that'll help me a little bit with the altitude. Mm. Heading down to the mine, my mouth is really numb. Feels like I had three shots of Novocaine in my mouth. But I feel like I have energy. As you can see here, compared to the old mine, the process is a lot more environmentally friendly or our tailings and our rubbish actually gets contained with membranes, so nothing gets uh, through to any rivers, and, it, and we have it really nice contained here. Tungsten is used in part to create high heat-resistant metals, steels for tools, filaments for light bulbs, and many other items. But we're here for the shiny, the crystallized ores, often rare, but highly collectible. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit low yes. for me. 
Peruanos, no me dice. <laughs> Made for Peruvians. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Jaime tells me that they started working the Lucilena vein in 2005, and they started on level 12, which is two levels below us. We're on level 10, and we're gonna walk about 2,000 feet to their chimney, and then climb up about 200 feet to level nine, which is where they're working now. ¿Dónde han disparado? ¿En la galería? ¿El 9? ¿Y qué para? ¿Ah? ¿Y qué para? Arriba está. ¿Qué labor? ¿En qué labor estás tú? En la galería arriba, chimenea. ¿Chimenea? ¿Ahí han disparado mismo? Sí. Entonces, uh, ¿están disparando donde vamos? Eh, sí. So. I don't know if you heard them or not, but those sounds you heard were explosions. And so they were just setting off charges uh, in the area where we're going. So uh, we're not going to be able to go into that area at this moment because of the poisonous gases and so forth. We have to wait about two hours to go in. I mean, is there another vein like anywhere here that might have something on the wall? There's another vein that you can see. Then we can't enter with the masks? No. They say they're blasting everything. You want to wait an hour? Let's go out there and figure it out. I'm not going to figure out anything in here. I'm going to wait for the next So let's exit while they're dynamiting shit. Okay. Okay. Let's go, guys. Disappointed and feeling the effects of the elevation, we wait. After the long, dangerous drive, none of us are working on a full battery. But we return a little slower than usual, with a better understanding of just how hard miners work every day to bring us the minerals that run our world. We were finally allowed to come back into the mine and we arrived at the chimney. And we're gonna go up to level nine and see if we can see some uh, crystals of tungsten. Sounds good, good. Let's so all get some oxygen and then prepare yeah. to go up. Okay. I've been to many mines throughout my career, and Pasta Bueno is a safe and sturdy one. But this commute to the blast zone was no easy job. This is serious. This is serious. <laughs> this is serious. This is steep, and it's a hard climb, especially at 15,000 feet. The rule when climbing a chimney is one foot, one hand at all times. But if altitude sickness hits, you get a little dizzy. A slip can turn into a disaster. Whew, what a climb. <sighs> Finally, with 20 ladders below me, climbing through narrow tunnels and fighting altitude sickness, we hope to find a treasure that's worthy of the climb. While catching my breath, I realize, thanks to the blasting, we're standing in a place no one has ever stood before, seeking pieces of nature's art that will be seen for the first time. Well, we finally arrived at level nine, and it wasn't an easy climb, believe me. I think it's one of the hardest ones I've made. But uh, the, one of the first things we see here is a big cavity of quartz, and it's got some what looks like humanoid in it. They're definitely tungsten. And uh, there's some really nice looking crystals there, actually. It doesn't look like much now, but this is what I see. Amongst the fresh rubble are the possibilities for crystals like this. 
The entire width of this room is a giant quartz vein. And embedded in that quartz vein, throughout the room, you can see all kinds of tungsten, little black uh, crystals. And then right up in this cavity right here, you can see a giant crystal. It's embedded in the quartz, and it's, it's really neat to be able to see these things, how they naturally form. Collectors like to collect tungsten in all its varieties, hubnerite, ferberite, and wolframite. And those are the three primary varieties that it comes in. But they really especially like to get pieces like this one up here uh, in Matrix when they're this brilliant, because this is really a shining one up here. Less well known than rhodochrosite, tungsten has a royal beauty all its own. Some have a red that shines through in just the right light. This entire vein, this huge vein of quartz, was running in this direction like that. With the highest concentration of tungsten, they're telling me, over on this side. But also, if you take a look up here at the top, there's a real nice collection of big crystals up there that have all converged together. Some say that tungsten crystals improve your stamina, and maybe that's true. But even in a tunnel full of them, I was wearing down. It's been quite an adventure to come to Pasta Bueno and take in the beautiful scenery and see how they mine the tungsten here. And I'm looking forward to uh, showing you some of the beautiful minerals that come out of this mine. But for right now, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and we're going to head back down the mountain. After a needed night's rest and feeling a little sore, Umberto and I go see some old friends. I've known this fellow here for, uh, since 1980. I met him here last time. Estoy aquí buscando, está buscando lakis. Sí. ¿Usted lo tiene algunos? No hay lakis ahora. No hay. He, I was just right in this same area here buying minerals, and he helped us, helped me with my car. Me ayudó con mi auto, ¿no? Sí, sí, claro, claro. Yeah. Ah, sí. No, pues. Ahí le he enseñado tres, así tres. ¿Se puedo ver? It's in menta. Okay, gracias. Oh, these are really old pieces. These are, uh, okay, 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 how many years do you have these? Eh, más o menos 30 years, no? Oof. These are like 30 years old, these little pieces here. This is when rhodochrosite was coming out of the mine uh, more frequently. It's not really coming out now. These are kind of cute. Though the rotos weren't what I was hoping for, the day hadn't gone to the birds just yet. He likes my quartz. <laughs> Small villages like these often hold many great finds. This is a uh, quartz with humanite. Plus, unlike buying from local dealers, you know all the money goes directly to the mining family. Nearly 40 years later, Pasta Bueno is as mineral rich and rewarding as ever. But Lima awaits, where we'll meet a friend you may remember from an earlier episode. Teodosio, que tal? Muy bien, gracias. Bien, bien. Que bueno verte de nuevo. Teodosio Ramos, owner of the Mundo Nuevo Pyrite Mine, has invited us to see his personal collection. <laughs> yeah, we know it's pyrite, but this flagship mineral didn't always work alone, often bringing tungsten into every serious collector's case. And this has uh, several minerals on it. Humanorite, pyrite, quartz, and sphalerite with it, all on the same plate. It's really rare to get this combination. Collectors would like this because it's in such good condition and it has such a nice variety of minerals. Peru continues to create a large variety of stunning specimens. And while not known for its fluorite, there's often beautiful pieces at affordable prices. Tungsten is also quickly finding its rightful place in the case. This is a really nice piece because it's crystallized all the way around. It's got hugnerite, quartz, and fuchsia. 
¿Y qué le gusta de esa pieza? Eh, la estética, porque tenemos un grupo de cuarzo y de ahí sale el cristal de tungsteno y en la luz es rojo. While stones may not contain the blood of past kings and queens, they are a unique reminder of the world's rich history. Epic adventures that can prick your curiosity like the thorn from an Incan rose or the sip of a pisco sour. Salud! 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 If you want to see more episodes or check out our mineral collection, click the link in the description. And of course, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Mineral Explorers.